The Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. needs cutting. Again? We just cut it two weeks ago. Well, that's grass for you. You water it, you fertilize it, you weed it, you don't walk on it. And how does it show its gratitude? It grows. Boy, that grass grows as fast as my hair. Faster. Why don't you give it a butch? Hey, that's a good idea. We'll do it as soon as you get home from school this afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I can't. I have to stay after school. Oh, dear. Penmanship again. No, the teacher says I'm getting to write pretty good now. Well, what is it then? Now that she can read my writing, she found out that I don't know how to spell. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to find some other helper, that's all. Put your napkin on. Morning, Mom. Good morning, Chris. What's the matter with me? Have I suddenly become invisible? <laughs> Children, now, please. Chris, are you coming right home from school today? Sure, why? Well, the grass is... It's sort of time to cut it, and I, I was wondering if you'd help me. Mother! Well, what if Walter Brewer drives by on his bicycle, and I'm out there cutting the grass? How would it look? It would look a lot better than it does now. <laughs> Oh, well, then that explains why the members of the embroidery club threw stones at me the last time I cut the grass. <laughs> oh, Mother. Morning. Good morning, Sherman. Hi, Chris. Hi. Sherman, I suppose you have a very good reason why you can't help me cut the grass this afternoon. Gosh, no. I'd love to help you. Well, good boy. I finally got a helper. I thought you had a music lesson this afternoon. <laughs> I thought it was too good to be true. I'd a lot rather help cut the grass than play on that old piano. Oh, no. Your mother wouldn't like that. She doesn't need to know. Well, now she'd find out eventually. I won't tell her if you don't. I won't tell her if you give me a quarter. Now, now, just a minute. I appreciate your offer, Sherman, but you better take your music lesson. Well, I guess I have just one prospect left. <laughs> Good morning, Viv. Uh, it's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Is it worth opening my eyes to find out? <laughs> Those darn blackbirds were singing outside my window at 5 a.m. There must have been 20 of them. If they have four more friends over, I'm going to bake them in a pie. <laughs> you know, Viv, speaking of the trees and the birds in the yard and all, uh, I was noticing our grass. Shh. Not until she's had her coffee. <laughs> What's this you don't want to tell me till I've had my coffee? Uh, I was just wondering if you'd help me cut the grass this afternoon. Hey, I've been doing enough work around this house lately. Who got dinner last night? Who did the laundry last week? Who did the marketing yesterday? Who? Who? Apparently, some crabby blonde owl. <laughs> You haven't you got any civic pride? What will the neighbors think? Maybe if we let the grass grow a little higher, they won't know we're here. <laughs> well, we got to do something about the grass. Anybody got any suggestions? Why don't you cover the grass with cement? 
Yeah, that'd make a neat basketball court. <laughs> I suggest you buy a power lawnmower. Have you any suggestions as to where we get the hundred dollars to pay for it? Ask Mr. Barnstall at the bank. Oh, sure. Well, he's in charge of the money Daddy left us. Isn't he supposed to give us some when we need it? Yeah, but his idea of need and my idea of need are slightly different. Compared to Mr. Barnsdall, Scrooge was a swinger. <laughs> I know what we can do. What's that, darling? We've been studying about Australia in school. And Miss Clementine says that the farmers there never have to cut the grass. They let the sheep graze on the land, and they keep it trim by eating it. Well, good. We'll all move to Australia. <laughs> Two-acre basketball court was a better idea. Hey, we'll miss the box. Let's go. No, no, Bye, Mom. Bus. Bye, Aunt Bear. No, 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 Bye. Don't fall off the bus, children. Don't get lost in the grass. <laughs> We ought to get one. Might be the answer to all our problems. They would just eat and sleep and stay outdoors all the time and play with the children. What are you talking about? A sheep. <laughs> oh, I thought you were describing an ideal husband. <laughs> no, I mean, why not do as Sherman said and get a sheep to eat the grass? Now, Lucy, you're not thinking of going into sheep farming. Not a whole farm. I just mean one good, thin sheep that's been on a diet. <laughs> well, if you ask me, I think the whole idea is crazy. All right, do you want to mow the lawn? <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> to go look at the wan ass to see where we can get a cheap sheep. <laughs> Have you decided yet? No, not yet, Mr. Evans. I'm still browsing. Please make up your mind. You've seen every animal I got, unless you're gonna hang around till next spring for the lambing season. Well, I want to make sure I get a good one. This is the first time I've ever been sheep shopping. <laughs> what do you mean, Miss Carmichael? There's no difference in sheep. I'll bet there is to another sheep. <laughs> Let me see that one right there. Oh, no. Now that I see it up close, I don't think so. <laughs> What's the matter with that one? His eyes, they're too close set. <laughs> yeah, you can never trust him. See? He looks crooked. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he was 40% cotton. <laughs> You've already looked at him once. Well, somehow he looks different now. Could be. He's a lot older now. <laughs> what is there about raising sheep that makes a man so sour? <laughs> oh. I like this one. Yeah, he's kind of cute. You like black sheep, Viv? Like him? I was married to one. <laughs> Viv, you don't mean half the things you say about Ralph. I mean everything I say about Ralph. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Evans. Um, may I see him? Her. Her, him, that one. <laughs> oh, here. Say, that one's a pretty color. Oh, oh, and I just love the way it wrinkles its flat little nose when it smiles. Watch it, that's how I started with Ralph. <laughs> One. Good, you'll be forty dollars. Forty? You said they were thirty-five. Ah, uh, but this is a lead sheep. Leaders cost more. Oh dear, wouldn't you know I'd have expensive taste even with sheep? <laughs> <laughs> all right, will you take a check? All right with me. Will it be all right with Mr. Barnsdall? Oh, you had to bring that up. <laughs> what am I going to tell Mr. Barnsdall? Well, you could put forty dollars for a sheep on the check, and then if he asks you about it. Tell him it's mutton for the freezer. Please, not in front of the L.A.M.B. <laughs> you didn't hear that, honey. Okay, I'll send you a check, Mr. Evans. Uh, 
Uh, how am I going to get this in the car now? Well, little Bo Peep, why don't you just leave it alone and it'll come home wagging its tail behind it. Go open the door. Okay. Like this? No, there. Okay, I got it. I think... Ooh! <laughs> I sure got a pretty one, though, didn't I? Thanks, Mr. Evans. Hey, you really are all wool with a yard wide. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful sight? The yard's almost completely cropped and Clementine's only been nibbling for three days. She's liable to chew her way out of a job. Yeah. As soon as she finishes with the yard, I'm going to promote her to hedges. That's automation for you. You know, if this catches on, there are going to be a lot of gardeners out of work. Yeah, you're not kidding. Mrs. Farrington down the road offered me $2 a day to let Clementine do her yard. Lucy, yeah. We could go into a rat a sheep business. <laughs> yeah, we could have our own U drive. <laughs> huh? Our own U drive. U, U. E W E. Oh, forget it. Just thinking, if we can rent out one sheep, why not two or four or more, maybe a whole flock, and then just sit back and watch the profits roll in? Hey, we could make a fortune. I wonder how much grass Clementine would have to chew her way through before we can afford mink coats. <laughs> mink coats? <laughs> ah, Clementine, keep on eating. As soon as you finish, you can have Mrs. Barrington's yard for dessert. <laughs> oh, Lucy, it's starting to snow. So? So, if there's snow all over the ground, there won't be any grass for Clementine to eat. The neighbors won't have to rent her. We'll have to feed her. And it's back to our old cloth coats. <laughs> oh, it can't be snowing. It's too early. Well, there's something coming down, and it isn't pennies from heaven. <laughs> oh, gee, we're going to have to do something about Clementine. She'll catch pneumonia. Clementine! Clementine! Come on, girl! Are you going to bring her in the kitchen? Well, what else can I do with her? The garage isn't heated. She can't stay out there. Well, what's your plan? Are you going to keep her in the house all winter? No. Just until we can build her a nice, warm little shed. Oh, it isn't enough we have to buy expensive feed for her. Now we've got to build her a house. Well, when you're in business, you have to expect little setbacks. <laughs> Great. I've been in business two minutes, and already there's a recession. Clementine! <laughs> Clementine! Come on, girl! Anybody home? Oh, Mr. Barnstall. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> the front door was unlocked, so I just took the liberty of coming right oh, in. Oh, sure, that's fine. Uh, 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 how's every little thing down at the bank, huh? Well, it's as good as we expected, considering we have Mrs. Carmichael as a customer. <laughs> is, uh, is she home, yeah, by the way? Home. Yeah, she's home. Well, where is she? Oh, she's out in the backyard getting up. Uh, 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 she'll be in in just a minute. <laughs> I'd like you to explain a very interesting check that she wrote. Now, I realize I only handle our business affairs, and I wouldn't pry for the world, but I should like to know why in blue blazes she paid $40 for a sheep. Well, it's cheaper than a power lawnmower. <laughs> well, it's cheaper than a yacht, too, but what's that going to do with it? Well, you can't cut grass with a yacht. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Bagley, don't confuse me. I'll just wait and let Mrs. Carmichael do it. Yeah. <laughs> baby, baby, you're gonna be nice and warm in here. <laughs> Clementine, shake hands with your banker.
Lucy, what are you going to do about Clementine? I don't know. I fed her. I, I wrapped her in a nice warm blanket. I think the only way you're going to stop her is to wrap her in some nice aluminum foil and show her the barbecue. <laughs> I bet you don't mean that. Well, if I don't get some sleep pretty soon, I'm liable to mean it. Mommy, I can't sleep. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> Where's Sherman? Sound asleep. How come? He stuffed his ears full of Clementine's wool. <laughs> How are we ever going to get any sleep? I don't know. I'll go down and see what I can do. <laughs> uh, by yourself. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> You're driving us all crazy. Now listen, you've got to go to sleep. You're keeping everybody awake. What's the matter? Are you sick? You haven't got a fever. What am I going to do with you? Now look, Clementine, you're just going to have to go to sleep. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down, Clementine, and count sheep or whatever you count. <laughs> Maybe I can put you to sleep like I used to put Jerry and Chris to sleep. and leave it on somebody's doorstep. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, hey, why don't we get her back to Mr. Evans without his knowing it? How? We could sneak her in the pen with the other sheep. He'd never notice one more. Hey, that's good thinking. And we'd be doing Mr. Evans a favor, too. He can sell Clementine all over again. And we'd be doing the other sheep a favor, too. Saving the trouble of electing a new leader. <laughs> We'll do it first thing in the morning. What's wrong with right now? Right now? It's way past midnight. Well, if we wait until morning, Mr. Evans is liable to catch us doing him this great favor. <laughs> Besides, what have we got to do the rest of the night? Sleep. <laughs> oh, all right. Go warm up the car. We'll be right down. <laughs> I never see another sheep as long as I live. Lucy, 
A night like last night, speeding along at 3 o'clock in the morning with you and that not-so-darling Clementine almost makes Ralph look good. <laughs> Come in. Great news! I've saved the day! Mr. Barnes, dog, could you please save the day a little more quietly? Who's sleeping? We are, as soon as we go back to bed. You two certainly live a soft life. You get up, eat, send the children to school, go right back to bed again. Yeah, well, could you tell us your great news so us two pampered darlings can slither back between our satin sheets? <laughs> well, if you're going to be cranky, I won't tell you how you can make $200 with that ridiculous beast. $200 with Clementine? How? How? Well, I've got a friend of mine in an advertising agency. I told him about Clementine, and he wants to come over and take a picture for a layout for a blanket company. Oh, well, as a matter of... What does your friend need, Clementine? Tomorrow morning, he wants to come over and take a picture. Oh, well, well she'll be ready. Good. <laughs> I have to get back to the bank. You know, I do have other things to do besides getting jobs for sheep. <laughs> Lucy, can I ask you a question? <laughs> sure. Are you crazy? <laughs> is that your question? <laughs> this is a two-part question. <laughs> Why did you tell him Clementine would be available tomorrow morning? Because she will be. We'll go and get her. <laughs> How? Tonight, after it gets dark, we'll go and snatch her out of the pen. <laughs> we can't do that. Since when are you against making $200? since the penalty for sheep napping is a stiff jail sentence and a big fine. You are not a sheep napper if you're napping your own sheep. I'd hate to have to explain that to a judge. <laughs> Oh, Lucy, how are we ever gonna find her? All sheep look alike. Oh, they do not. Well, they do to me. Clementine. Here, Clementine. Clementine. Here, Clementine. Well, the real Clementine Carmichael. <laughs> Here, Clementine. You're not Clementine. You're not Clementine. You're not Clementine. You're not. You certainly aren't. Here, Clementine. Clementine. Clement, oh, Lucy, we could be here all night and never find her. Oh, come here. Take me to your leader. <laughs> I'll find her. I know how to find her. How? Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling, Clementine. Oh, my darling. 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 Clementine. You are gone and lost forever. Clementine. I found her. I found, I found her. her. This is Clementine. Is that her? Yes, I can yes. sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't just stand there. Pick up your end. <laughs> How come this end is mine? <laughs> Carmichael, this is Mr. Vincent, the photographer. How do you do? How do you this do? is Bagley. Hello, nice to meet you. Do? I was just looking at the backyard. I think I can set up my lights right out there. Okay, okay. Uh, come in time to be out in a jiffy. All right, thank you. Hey. Where, uh, where is our little four-legged cover girl? <laughs> She's down in the cellar playing with the boys. I'll get her. Boys, bring up Clementine. We haven't told the boys about Clementine's new career. No, we don't want to spoil them by telling them they're going to be millionaires, kids. But I'll settle for a slight return, all right? What do you got there? What's that? It looks like Clementine's wool. That's right. What, what are you what doing, are you doing with, with it? it? We're going to sell it. What for? 
Oh, it's the paper. 